Today, I'm going to be ranking every mission in Red Dead Redemption 1. I'm going to be starting chronologically, explaining every mission's importance to the story and how much I personally liked every mission based on both story importance and how fun the gameplay is. I will then rank every mission from each chapter at the end of every chapter and rank all the missions in one big tier list at the end. 95% of my viewers are unsubscribed, so if you'd like to see more content like this, please subscribe. Exodus of America starts off Red Dead Redemption's story with one of the greatest intros in any video game, slowly introducing us to the world of Red Dead Redemption with no dialogue. You get a good sense of the death of the Wild West with the expansion of Christianity into New Austin and the train system that gets John there. You get a solid introduction to John's character, that he's working for important people, he has a wife, and he's a countryman, not a city man. You also get introduced to Bill and see that while he might not be as intelligent as John, John was a little too impatient and shouldn't have taken Bill headfirst in this first mission. While this mission might not be all that interesting in terms of gameplay, as you basically don't do anything but ride your horse, it does a great job of introducing the characters and introducing you to John and Red Dead Redemption's world. In New Friends Old Problems, we get a strong introduction to Bonnie McFarland, seeing that she's a strong, smart, caring woman that would take care of John even without knowing what he'll do after she saves him. This mission is pretty much just an introductory mission, with Bonnie showing John around the ranch and just getting the player used to the mechanics of shooting in Deadeye. Because of this pretty slow pace, I feel like it's just pretty boring on its own as a mission, at least gameplay wise. It doesn't have much to go for it besides Bonnie and John's banter during the mission. Obstacles in Our Path introduces the player to the whole horse ride mechanic in Red Dead Redemption as Bonnie challenges John to a horse race around the ranch and you kind of understand that John is being coy about his case because he has people to protect and he doesn't want to get anyone in else involved with the government. This mission isn't all that interesting during its time as it's just a horse race but it is kind of fun to race Bonnie because she is very competitive and you do get a little like you do get to learn about John a little bit more during this mission. This is Armadillo USA is a pretty boring mission and while there is some great dialogue between Bonnie and John on their carriage ride down to Armadillo, that's basically the extent of the entire mission. You do learn that John owns his own ranch in Great Plains, but that's a minor detail that doesn't really make the mission any better. Just because this one is a straight horse ride or like carriage ride down to Armadillo, there's not enough going on for me to think it's a great mission at all. In Woman and Cattle, John details his full backstory, telling Bonnie about his wife, his family, and his reasons for attacking Bill Williamson. John also goes deeper into his father's life and has some great foreshadowing that nothing gets forgotten in America. John also has some great philosophical words here, telling Bonnie too much about himself, getting her somewhat roped into his mission with the government, which he tried not to do in some of the previous missions. But the cattle herding part of this mission isn't all that interesting, but it is pretty okay gameplay wise. Overall, this mission is really carried by John opening up to Bonnie and the player at the beginning of the mission because you finally get to dig into John's backstory and understand why he's trying to kill Bill. In Wild Horses Teen Passion, Drew McFarlane starts the mission with some interesting words about the Wild West needing to stay wild, and he wants to keep all the governmental stuff out of New Austin, the kind of stuff that John is actually bringing into New Austin with his mission to kill Bill and Javier. I also like all the horse breaking. I feel like horse breaking is one of the most interesting activities you can do in Red Dead Redemption. Just every single time I have to break a horse, I feel like it's pretty fun, especially in the missions. When you do it outside, I feel like it's like, okay, it does get a little repetitive at times but in the missions I feel like it is pretty fun in its own way and there is some great dialogue between Bonnie and John and I just really love their chemistry together they both act like they don't really like each other and just have some great sarcasm between each other where it's like oh we're friends and it's like I don't know I really love it and this mission is just really good I love the whole horse breaking thing I think both Drew McFarlane and Bonnie have some great dialogue during this mission in a tempest looms John has some good dialogue but the whole point of the mission being getting Bonnie's cattle back into their corral doesn't really advance the story forward at all and just a basic task that doesn't move things along besides progressing John and Bonnie's friendship and just their kind of bond together. Hurting the cows back is 
kind of interesting, especially when they're going for the cliff. But I feel like every single time I can't stop them from the cliff. Maybe I'm just a bad gamer, but I feel like it's just not fun enough where I'd be like, oh, I want to do it over and over again until I stop them from the cliff. It's just like kind of a boring task in general to be hurting the cows and a hassle after doing it for five minutes straight. It's an okay mission on its own, but it doesn't really progress the story and the gameplay isn't too amazing. In political realities in Armadillo, I love the beginning of the mission where John messes with Mr. Johnson's deputy, Jonah. And I feel like this is a really great introductory mission for the game, introducing the player to Lee Johnson, the take cover feature, the whistle feature, and doing a good job of hiding all those features in a pretty okay gunfight, especially for the start of the game, and a pretty interesting bounty story about John and Marshall Johnson taking in the leader of Walton's Boys, and how the Walton's Boys kind of just do whatever they want in Armadillo, because it's not really hurting the town specifically in its own right. I think that's pretty cool, and there are like the whole like political point of the mission. I feel like that's pretty cool in its own right. There's a little bit of like backstory with that. It's not that interesting, but it still is cool, so I think this is a pretty solid mission. In Justice in Pike's Basin, John rides with the marshal and his deputies to take out cattle rustlers. It's a pretty solid gunfight that kind of progresses up the entire valley to finally reaching like the cattle rustlers base and taking out the people that they held hostage. And it's just fun to bond with the marshal's deputies, especially Jonah, who you kind of trolled in the, episode, or the mission before. And like also the fat guy, I don't really remember his name, but like he's pretty cool as well. And the fight quickly progresses across the canyon, which gives it this really unique setting as you're like either on the canyon walls and shooting down. It's pretty similar to like the Sadie Adler mission in Red Dead Redemption 2. And I just think this mission overall really works well to build up John's rapport with a marshal and gives it a little bit more depth about how forthcoming John is with his whole mission to kill Bill and Javier because he just kind of hides it from every single person. In Old Swindler Blues, John meets Nigel West Dickens, a con artist, and one of the funniest, most eccentric characters in the entire game. John saves him from outlaws that are trying to hunt him down for... I'm not actually sure the reason, but he eventually brings him back into town. I really love Nigel West Dickens' character. I think this is a great introduction as you see him as a man who kind of needs a brawny guy like John to protect him to pull off all these con artist stuff and all the scams he does. And the gameplay during this mission is also like solid especially for the beginning of the game because even though it's just a ride back into town john fighting off the outlaws while driving the coach is pretty like chaotic and pretty fun at the same time especially when nigel west dickens is always just saying weird stuff like oh you're going off the road and he's like playing it up a lot i feel like it's pretty fun and it's overall a good mission that could have been extended a little bit but i still think it's solid just because nigel west dickens really carries this mission in Spare the Rod, Spoil the Bandit, John rides off with the sheriff to liberate a ranch from outlaws. You quickly get to see their brutality as John and the marshal see bloody bodies on the ground, seeming like the outlaws went on a killing spree. As they draw near, they see another murder scene, pretty similar to the last one, and they eventually stumble upon Ridgewood Farm, where it's just a ghost town. No one's out at all. They find the barn boarded up and they see dead naked bodies hanging from their neck on a noose which is kind of crazy in its own right and it's just a brutal crime scene in the barn they find a survivor who tells them the bandits are all hidden in the house and after john and the marshal fight the bandits off they're kind of chewed out by the residents who chastise them for not being protected it's re revealed that bill was the one who actually orchestrated the killings here and he and his men try and threaten john and then start fighting them it's a pretty solid gunfight where john the deputies and the marshal fight off Williamson's gang and they eventually capture Bill's second in command Norman Deke. And I feel like this is just an amazing mission that shows the brutality of Bill. It just perfectly fits this dark western vibe. You never understand what's coming next and each twist kind of adds a new layer to this mission and this mission just packs so much into this super short time frame. I think it's just one of the best missions in the entire game and kind of sneaks in at like being one of the most early missions in the entire game as well. In You Shall Not Give False Testimony Except for Profit, Wes Dickens ropes John into scamming people at Ridgewood Farm. This mission is really weird in the sequencing of the game because John and Wes Dickens literally go to scam people at Ridgewood Farm right after the massacre happened there in the previous mission, which is really weird, but it... Wes Dickens does put on an amazing sham and John's whole expertise in marksmanship 
really works to prove his points. John eventually does get into a fight with one of the men that tries to disprove Dickens of his scam, but John beats him up and disarms him, kind of proving West Dickens right to all the other men. And then West Dickens eventually sells a ton of his elixir because everyone's like, oh, if John beat up this guy, he can shoot really well and do all this. The elixir must work. And I just really love this mission because it shows that Wes Dickens is a goat at scamming people and just his whole sham always amuses me because he's one of the most charismatic people, but he just does it in such a bad way. And it like, it, it just works really well. And it's just so funny because he just says bigger and bigger words to prove his point and everyone falls for it every time. So I just love him as a character. I feel like this mission is really solid, even if the gameplay is not all that interesting. Exhuming and other fine hobbies introduces us to Seth, who is an eccentric character and is definitely deranged because he's a necrophiliac and he doesn't really understand what's reality and what's fiction because he's always talking to dead people and he's having relationships with dead people. Just a weird guy in general. But he spends a lot of his time stealing possessions from dead people and John helps Seth with finding his partner who is in the custody of lawmen and has half of a map that him and Seth are supposed to use to get a treasure. After John distracts the lawmen, Seth finds his partner who reveals that the map is in Oddfellow's Rest. And this mission does a really great job of introducing the wanted system and the partner pardon letters. It also introduces us to Seth, who's just such a crazy character and pretty similar to Wes Dickens in his own right, but just way crazier in a whole different way. And I think it's not all that fun of a mission, but it works pretty solidly as an introduction to Seth and just like an introduction to the wanted system as well. In a gentle drive with friends, John and Seth try to transport dead bodies, and Seth rifles through their bodies to find the edge part of his map. Some bandits try to attack them during the time. They're just treasure hunters, but they're pretty easy to hold off throughout the entire time. I feel like just every time it's just like, oh, you just aim and lock onto them and you just shoot them down. Seth eventually does find the map in one of their bodies and realizes the treasure is in Tumbleweed where they were already headed. John eventually does drop Seth off and the mission ends. This mission is pretty underwhelming. You just kind of shoot out a bunch of the treasure hunters and there isn't that end payoff of eventually finding the treasure, which kind of just goes into the next mission. In Let the Dead Bury Their Dead, Seth and John look for the treasure in Tumbleweed, but the treasure hunters from the previous mission followed them there. I mean, I feel like it was pretty easy. They already kind of knew where Seth was going, but they eventually fight their way all the way up to the abandoned mansion where the treasure is supposed to be and find out the treasure is actually a glass eye after killing all the treasure hunters. Seth was actually pissed after this and he just, he was kind of crazy, but John was just like, whatever. The mission is pretty solid and I really like the fighting through Tumbleweed as it kind of does a good job of like progressing your way up there where it's like, oh, you're fighting off some of the treasure hunters. You get all the way up to this mansion where they're kind of shooting you down. Like it's a little bit up the hill and I feel like it's pretty solid, but there, you don't really get that same payoff of like getting the cool treasure, but it's kind of a nice twist where it's like there's nothing really in there. It's just kind of a funny thing that a deranged guy like Seth would think there's a great treasure in there. In Liars, Cheats, and Other Proud Americans, Wes Dickens and John try to swindle people with John winning the kart race. The kart race is pretty solid, and while the carts are pretty janky, any competition like a kart race is kind of always welcomed in my book. I mean, the carts are just so weirdly hard to control, but I feel like just any kind of competition in this, right, especially when you race against eight other people, is pretty fun. Wes Dickens, again, always has some interesting or weird dialogue that's pretty funny, but the kart race to me is really the highlight of the mission and while there's not much else going on i feel like the cart race in itself and that little competition and the kind of jank of using the carts makes it a lot more fun so i think this is a pretty solid mission in can a swindler change his spots john and west dickens try to pull off their tonic scam again but the first people they scammed from ridgewood farm come back and attack them it's just a crazy amount of people that just start attacking them for you know scamming them i kind of get it but it's a little weird and john and dickens ride off in the wagon while being chased by their angry customers. The gunfight, just John holding them off, is pretty solid. And there's one per portion where John blows up a crate of TNT that was blocking the road, but just kind of like a never ending stream of bad guys. And it seems kind of weird because we, you know, while Wes Dickens is a scammer, I feel like a lot of people are just be like, okay, you know, take my money, even though I have a gun, like I'm not gonna risk my life trying to, you know, get a little bit of money back from this guy. And it does get kind of repetitive after shooting like 10 guys. So it's not the most amazing mission, but it's nice to see Wes Dickens finally gets what it's coming to him. And he can't really be a scammer anymore because he's kind of a known scammer at this point. 
In the sport of kings and liars, John and Wes Dickens need more money to do the raid on Bill Williamson's fort. So John rides in another race. This race again is solid, but not as fun as the cart race because the cart race was a little bit more competitive, especially with the horses. And I feel like just being on so much like open space, it's a lot easier to control them. And it's just way easier than the cart race where it's like a little janky and shit's always moving around. And this one, like even the Bonnie one was a little bit more competitive than this one, even though there's eight people and John wins and Wes Dickens goes off to prepare for the raid on Fort Mercer. It's a pretty interesting mission, but it's nothing special. In A Frenchman, A Welshman, and An Irishman, we meet Irish after saving him from the Frenchman and the Irishman who are waterboarding him for stealing their horse. Irish promises to find the gun that will help John in the raid on Fort Mercer. It's a Gatling gun, and Irish takes him to a cabin occupied by a group of bandits and leaves John to take it on by himself. John eventually easily fights off the bandits because there's like four guys guarding the so-called gun, and there's not a gun inside. This is an okay mission. There's not really much payoff for the gun, but I do think it is kind of funny that you clearly see that Irish is this guy that always leaves the mission early and that really comes into play as the game progresses where he just keeps on, you know, being in a different place at the, the perfect time, which is really funny. But like, I don't think Irish's character is that well explored for being the introduction mission, but I think I still think it's a solid mission nonetheless. In Man is Born Onto Trouble, John confronts Irish while he's kind of drunk out of his mind, and Irish says that he made a mistake and he promises to help John get a machine gun from miners in Gaptooth Ridge. The fight through the mine is pretty cool with some solid cramped quarters, gunfights, and a pretty solidly unique setting, riding down from the top of the mine to the bottom, shooting the miners, especially when they have like some funny and crazy dialogue is also extremely fun and i wish they utilized it a little bit more in this mission because just using the minecart and shooting down is like i don't know really fun somehow it's great and it gives this mission even more character overall this is just one of the better missions in the new austin section of the game and i feel like the banter between irish and john is good and it really builds on irish's character as he kind of just always hides out he doesn't want to get his hands dirty at all and there's this amazing gunfight especially when you're on that minecart that just makes this mission great and like more unique than a lot of the other missions in the game in On Shaky's Ground, John finds Irish drunk and robbing two nuns in Thieves Landing after he finds out the Gatling gun doesn't work because they don't have any ammunition from it. Irish says he can find the parts from his friend in Thieves Landing named Shaky and they'll get it. Irish's friend Shaky, who has the ammunition, is caught by his gang trying to sell the ammunition to Irish and then John eventually saves him from the gang you know, why by sneaking in the window. Shaky is actually named Shaky because he just, uh, 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 he stutters a lot. And after fighting the off the gang, John gets the machine gun ammunition. And the mission ends with some pretty boring wagon gun fight, which does get pretty repetitive. But overall, there is some nice transition from fighting in the warehouse to fighting outside the warehouse to then fighting in the wagon. And I feel like it's pretty fun to meet Shaky, a character who was very interesting for his time there. And especially when like Irish just does all these things that just are super mean to Shaky and just like makes fun of his disability. I think that is like a really comedic thing that works in the overall amount of the mission because Irish is also like a fuck up in his own right. So I don't know. I really like this mission. I think this one's really fun to do. In the burning, Bonnie's father Drew has gone missing and John and Bonnie go out riding for him. They find Drew and he's fine, but they see that rustlers have killed some horses around their ranch. And when they go back to the ranch, the barn was set on fire by the rustlers, but it was just probably Bill's gang. Not 100% sure, but we think it was. John finds a side entrance into the barn, opens the barn door, and rides all the horses out of the barn. This mission is pretty solid with some amazing emotional moments between Bonnie and John, especially when he saves all the horses. But the gameplay isn't all that interesting where you kind of have to parkour up the side of the barn and then get in there. And there's not really like much exciting going on because it kind of just like shows you the exact way you have to get into the barn. I feel like it'd be a lot more interesting if Rockstar, you know, gave you a couple different ways to get into the barn. You just had to pick between one, but it still does work well in spite of that. And it still is a pretty solid mission no matter what. In Hanging Bonnie McFarlane, Drew McFarlane goes to see the marshal and he's pissed at John because Bonnie went missing. Bonnie was taken by the Bill Williamson's gang and they want to trade Norman Deke back for Bonnie. The trade goes down in Tumbleweed and on the way there, there's some great dialogue about how the government basically only has their own interests at heart, which is pretty similar to like John's whole mission where they don't care about John himself or John's family. They just care about what they want to get done. 
The deal quickly turns left as the Williamson boys just use it to set up an ambush against Alaman and John. And the Williamson gang tries to hang Bonnie, but John fights his way down to cut her down from her lynching. And John and the Alaman fight off the remaining outlaws, and Bonnie is finally safe. This is a really great mission, and I love the tension and like you hear Bonnie screaming, help me, help me. And then like she gets lynched and it actually is like a very, very tense moment as John has to fight his way over to get to Bonnie. And while, you know, they're not like romantically involved, there is a sense of like, you know, tension in that way, especially from Bonnie's side. Like John's not reciprocating it back, but it's like John is the hero that's saving her and it should be like the princess and the prince get together or the princess and the hero get together, but they don't in this. And I feel like it works nicely to subvert those expectations. This is just a really great mission. While it doesn't have the greatest gunfights, there's some solid progression there, and I really like the urgency that Bonnie's hanging provides. Just the overall storyline of the mission, because Drew McFarlane just blames everything on John, even though it's not really his fault. The new Austin chapter climaxes in the assault on Fort Mercer, where John, Wes Dickens, Seth, Irish, and the lawmen find a way to assault Fort Mercer, with Seth opening the gate for everyone else to get in. After he gets in, just working a little bit of his necrophiliac charm, John hides in West Dickens' wagon with the Gatling gun there, and John attacks them once he gets in with the Gatling gun after West Dickens tries to con them into buying his elixir like normal. With the added firepower, John and the lawmen take the gang by surprise and pretty easily take over Fort Mercer. It is pretty fun to just like go through Fort Mercer and fight through it. I think it is a pretty cool setting and Wes Dickens comes back and warns them about Williamson's boys coming with reinforcements of over a hundred men. John hops back on the Gatling gun and he quickly takes out the reinforcements which is really fun because you'll just see like you'll shoot out a coach and they'll have TNT on the back and it'll just so blow up and it's pretty cool. And they, they actually capture a gang member who tells them that Bill ran off to Mexico and John will need to go there to kill him. John deduces that Bill is likely hiding there with Javier Escuela, another one of his targets, so he can go two for one on them. And he bids his farewell to the marshal and Wes Dickens as Irish says that he can take him to Mexico. The mission is great and the whole chapter kind of builds up to this one moment. And while there is a great gunfight, the mission really just blue balls you by telling you Bill went off to Mexico because you really expect this whole like conclusion to happen here while it might not be as fun for the player i love that it subverts expectations because i feel like that's all red dead redemption does in the entire game the last mission in new austin is we shall be together in paradise where john meets irish and west dickens and irish says he can take john across the border on his little boat saying that he has a ton of friends in mexico while irish has a nice rig set up to get across the river where he just like pulls on a rope and he gets himself across the river bandits who irish had a confrontation with of course like always this guy's always drinking all the time attack the boat and they're forced to cut the line and free flow away to mexico this mission is actually pretty tough with loads of fighters continuing to fire at you while you basically have no cover and you have to fight them off all from a boat while there's like seven different guys shooting at you from like different positions on the rock and while the gunfight isn't all that interesting like it's not that fun to just like keep on pointing at the rocks keep on shooting up there it is pretty challenging so it does make it a little bit more fun in that aspect and while this mission is solid i'm not really a big fan of the gunfight because it just like makes you mad in that way and it gets really repetitive where it's like bro like this guy is always killing me because he has a crazy angle on me and i mean you just go into dead eye and kill him like that but it it does just get a little annoying if you're like not trying to use dead eye and it just kind of gets boring at points so it is a solid mission but it just pisses me off sometimes here's my full ranking for all of the new austin missions The next mission, Civilization at Any Price, takes John Marson into Mexico, where he meets Captain DeSanta, who tells John about the Civil War in Mexico. DeSanta also tells John that he may be able to find Bill and Javier with Abraham Reyes, the leader of the rebels. DeSanta asks John to accompany him to where they're trying to lure Reyes into a trap. DeSanta's trap is pretending a supply train is coming and ambushing the rebels when they try to take it. I really like the introduction to DeSanta's character, seeing him as a deranged character who is in control of the military, wanting to stamp out any rebels. He's basically just like Scarface from Scarface, 
but he's like a Mexican Scarface who's also a homosexual, which is just kind of crazy in its own right. The gunfight during the train ride is pretty solid, progressing through the beautiful Mexican countryside with an amazing Mexican score playing in the background the entire time. After the train is stopped and the rebels are defeated, the rebels steal the train while the Santa and his men are playing card games and John is forced, you know, ass, but like forced to stop the train. Stopping the train after is a little too easy for me, but it does end the mission on a nice solid twist where like once you, you know, take the train, like, oh, this is over, I get to chill, but it kind of brings you back. Overall, it is a great mission that really introduces us to the Santa and has some really great progressions throughout the entire thing. In the Demon Drink, John meets Colonel Allende after he's berating Captain DeSanta. Colonel Allende says John must support DeSanta's men and Tesoro Azul if he wants the location of Bill and Javier. DeSanta challenges John to a race there, which is pretty easy to beat him, and they begin their raid there. They basically just murder every single person in there and take the women, but the raid there isn't all that interesting. But after the women are taken for Allende and John is forced to burn down the rest of the village, which is really disappointing coming from John's character as he's kind of hurting other people's lives to save his own and it really goes against him but at the same time you see John's character throughout the entire game he's willing to commit massacres just to get his family back this mission is okay but it's pretty brief and it illustrates how desperate John is doing something that goes against his moral code just because he wants to protect his family from the government the next mission, Empty Promises, DeSanta asks John to take him back to Nada, a fort that the Rebels had recently taken control over. On the way there, Rebels ambush them, and John quickly fights them off with DeSanta. John eventually uses a sniper rifle to snipe the Rebels off of the cliffs and begins the raid on the fort. They kind of fight their way up the hill to the, towards the fort, fighting their way through the fort's former ruins taking out the rest of the rebels. DeSanta keeps deflecting on where Bill and Javier are, trying to withhold the information until they've outused John. And this mission is pretty solid with a really great gunfight up a beautiful setting of the fort on the cliff. But there's not really that much going besides that. Like there's not really much going on with DeSanta and John. And I feel like it's just really fun to fight your way up because there's some great progressions as you like fight your way off the cliff and then through a bunch of these ruins and then eventually all the way to the fort. But there's not that much story going on, so it can't be like an amazing mission to me. In Mexican Caesar, John finds the Santa recruiting new women for Allende to have while they're crying. While John tries to butt in and stop them, he'd rather save his family than save the women, as the Santa offers him 20,000 pesos and the whereabouts to Javier Escuela if he fights instead. So John and Espinosa, another captain, are ambushed by rebels on their way to transporting munitions to their men in the camp. The fight there is pretty simple and like fighting off the ambushers is pretty simple but it clearly seems like a setup for Espinosa showing that John will probably have to fight off a large regiment of rebel soldiers because it doesn't seem like they're protecting the terrain with all that many people on the road to the train the rebels continue to attack which are all pretty easy to dispatch on the train Espinosa asks John to man the Gatling gun as he expects large attacks. It's pretty easy to fight off everyone as the Gatling gun strip just mows down all the rebels pretty easy it, it overall is a solid mission that's just a little bit bogged down by the repetitive gunfight on the train as you're just like manning the Gatling gun. I mean, it's okay, but it's just nothing that special. In the Gunslinger's Tragedy, John is accosted by Mexicans who want money from him, and John continues to threaten them while they don't really take him seriously. They ask for his boots, and then he eventually goes down to take off his boots and then pulls his gun out and shoots all of them. He meets Landon Ricketts, who scolds him for shooting the men, but then teaches him how to shoot better using Deadeye. Ricketts teaches him a couple of Deadeye tricks, and then they return to town when a man in Chuparosa, the town they are in, asks Ricketts to help them to defend his wagon. Ricketts and John quickly defend the wagon and easily fight their way back to town. This mission is a solid introduction to Ricketts, who is more of a compassionate character than someone like John, but isn't that exciting all in its own right, and I feel like the gameplay is pretty boring. In Landon Ricketts Rides Again, John meets Ricketts again, who introduces him to a man who knows Javier and one whose sister was kidnapped. John and Ricketts go out to rescue this guy's sister. They go to El Matadero, where they meet with Carlos, who helps them distract the guards who are guarding Luisa, this man's sister. 
John and Ricketts fight their way through the cave where Louisa is held, which is a pretty solid gunfight. I really like these like cave gunfights. It's kind of like interesting because there's like a meandering cave where they held Louisa. I feel like that's pretty cool. And then they re rescue Louisa from the prison and fight their way out against the chasing guards. I like this mission, but the gunfight isn't all that interesting. And you don't really get to meet Louisa's character despite being introduced to her in this mission. And while I kind of understand it because she was literally just in prison, you don't get like any dialogue with her at all, which I feel like kind of sucks in its own right, but it's still a solid mission nonetheless. In Lucky in Love, John meets Landon Ricketts, who's playing cards and winning a ton of hands. When John joins one of the men at the table, a German man accuses John of looking at his cards. This turns into a classic Mexican standoff, where everyone at the table has guns pointed at everyone else. This leads to a duel with the German man, Aaron Mueller, who John easily defeats. Then another stranger challenges John to a duel while holding a hostage. After John defeats him again, a few other men in the town start a shootout against John and Ricketts. John and Ricketts easily defeat them and then the mission ends. It's a solid mission and builds a lot of the bond between Ricketts and John, how they both kind of like defend each other, but it's a little bit too brief to me to be like a good or amazing mission at all. In the Mexican wagon train, John meets Ricketts again when Luisa comes in and tells them about the proposed executions that Allende will be committing against people who aren't really involved in the rebels' cause but are kind of speaking out against Allende. On the way to Escalera, Ricketts warns John about the predicament he's in, working on both sides of the war, and that'll eventually come back to bite him, foreshadowing what's going to happen a few missions down the line. John and Ricketts save the prisoners from their deaths, and John and Ricketts then drive over the border crossing to America, setting the fr prisoners free after taking fire from the Mexican army who's guarding the border crossing. Basically, you just ride your way over spamming X or like whatever sprint button you have. And it's pretty fun in there, but there's not really much going on. John and Ricketts then do part ways, leaving John to find Javier and Bill on his own. And he tells John to talk to Luisa. This is a solid mission, and I love the foreshadowing, especially from Ricketts to John. But the gunfights here are pretty boring and don't really add that much to the mission itself. The next mission, My Sister's Keeper, is one of my least favorite missions in the entire game, where John meets Louisa, who's helping her family leave for the hills to get away from the, the main fighting of the war. She asks John to take her sister to the docks, where she will go to the Yucatan to escape the war. On the way there, John and Miranda run into multiple roadblocks, which are pretty easily dis dispatched of, or the path is diverted, which is pretty much a nuisance. John gets Miranda down to the docks where she says goodbye and she leaves. I just hate this mission. The carriage driving is pretty wonky in this game to begin with. But when you add four horses and they force you to finish in a certain time period and you have to fight off soldiers in that entire thing makes this mission so annoying because sometimes I literally just like move the stick one way and then the, the wagon would crash and I have to restart the whole mission over again. And you have to restart the whole mission every single time. So it's like, oh my God, it kind of pisses me off because it's like a time mission. So you have to restart from the beginning. I don't know. It's just, I hate it so much. And because the, like once you get used to it, you kind of understand it. And you can like use Deadeye and everything to kill all these soldiers. But it just doesn't add anything to the storyline. The mission doesn't add anything to the storyline right before the story begins to ramp up. And it just like is a bad mission in itself. So this has to be one of my least favorite missions, if not my least favorite, just because there's nothing going on here that's like even good. In the next mission, Must a Savior Die, John goes to Louisa, who is outside her family's burned home, which quickly got torched after the last mission. She tells John that Abraham Reyes was captured and that they share a special connection and would be married if it wasn't for his family not approving of her because she's just a peasant. Louisa then asks John to accompany her to El Presidio to rescue him. John quickly climbs over a broken down wall, which is a little convenient, and snipes the executioner who is going to execute Reyes. John then easily takes out the other men guarding Reyes and rescues him. John and Reyes res ride back to Luisa while avoiding the military men who try to kill them. On the way back, Reyes reveals that he doesn't really know or care about Luisa and she's a disposable person and not someone he would marry at all and he would just give her to John if he really wanted her. But I do like this mission and I feel like meeting Reyes is really nice. It's not all that exciting in its own right. And I feel like the fight off of the El Presidio, which is like a super not heavily guarded fort, 
is pretty boring for like what it should be but it does just start to get the ball rolling in terms of the whole Mexico storyline. And I feel like meeting Abraham Reyes, it's just such a shocker because he literally is like a similar person to DeSanta and Allende, even if he's not as brutal and like as much of a dictator as they are. In the next mission, cowards die many times. John goes back to DeSanta and Allende, who tell John they have captured Bill and Javier. DeSanta and John go to Chuparosa, where Bill and Javier are said to be captured. As John walks through the town to the church where they are captured, you can see DeSanta's men gain in position to aim at the church. You think, oh, are they aiming at John? Are they aiming at Bill and Javier? Are they like in there like fighting their way out? And then you realize right after when DeSanta's men knock John out and they capture him as a prisoner because he's been working with Reyes. Reyes then saves him, mirroring John saving him in the previous mission. John and Reyes' men then fight against the army, killing Captain Espinosa in the process, who is leading the men in Chuparosa. Reyes then ends the victory with a speech, showing the charismatic leader he is and sealing John's loyalty to his side, especially after he just got betrayed by Allende and DeSanta. And I really like the twist in this mission, as well you know that John's double agent moves will eventually catch up to him. This one kind of surprised you, especially when DeSanta and Allende say they have Javier and Bill. You kind of just expect it to be finished especially like the first time you played through it but the gunplay really holds this mission back from being one of the best in the game as the fight is pretty boring but there's still just so much good stuff going on this mission that it is one of the best in mexico in the great mexican train robbery john finds reyes in his camp where reyes asks john to participate in a robbery with him during the ride reyes promises john that he's his best men working to find javier and bill and john threatens him implying that he will kill him if he doesn't find bill and javier soon john also tells reyes about dutch who says he loves dutch's idea being another violent revolutionary which shows reyes his true colors that he will also end up like dutch eventually reyes then reveals that they are robbing a train full of supplies mirroring john's fight to defend the mexican army's train from the rebels John sneaks onto the train after taking out the guards with throwing knives and detaches the train cars. He then fights off the rest of the soldiers on the train using a Gatling gun and his own weapons, taking control of the train. John then takes the train to Reyes and opens the armored car where he gets some money and a letter. Reyes says he will soon have the whereabouts of Williamson and Escuela. This is a great mission overall, and while again, the gunfights aren't all that interesting, there are a lot of little parts that make this mission great, and it kind of just progresses really nicely as things just keep going on to bigger and better things overall. So I think this is just a great mission in general. The next mission is Father Abraham, where John is stopped by security outside of Luisa's camp, who tells John her father was killed and his heart was fed to Allende's dogs. This is such a funny thing in the game because she just kind of mentions it so matter-of-factly. Like, of course she's crying because her dad died, but she just mentions that his heart got fed to Allende's dogs, which is really funny and shows how much of a monster Allende is. But like, just because of the fact that she said it so matter-of-factly it was so funny Luisa says that John needs to help her with destroying an army convoy John and some of the rebels set up dynamite to blow up the wagons after blowing up the dynamite John and the rebels easily take out the rest of the convoy and Luisa tells John to meet her this mission is okay but I feel like it very much doesn't need to be added into the story and just serves to make John's connection with Luisa a little bit stronger and for Luisa to take her anger of losing her dad in such a brutal way out on something but it really is like kind of a lame mission when there is so much building up at this point in the game. The next mission is Captain DeSanta's downfall where John meets Lu with Luisa who tells John about DeSanta overseeing a massacre in Sepulcro. John and Luisa's men go there to confront him, and when they finally find him, they see DeSanta making a rebel dig his own grave before shooting him, which is a classic one because they just don't stop him before that. John and the rebels quickly take out DeSanta's men before John captures DeSanta and asks him about Javier's whereabouts, who DeSanta says is in Casa Madruga. John then gets the chance to kill DeSanta, but if he doesn't, DeSanta will be finished by the rebels. John and the rebels then head to Casa Madruga, where DeSanta set a trap in Madruga as Madruga is full of Mexican army soldiers who John quickly disposes of. The mission is pretty great and I love to see DeSanta's face badly bruised and beaten even if he did lie to John about Javier. While again the gunfight isn't all that interesting, it moves the for story forward a lot and the Mexican chapter comes a lot closer to the end and just the fact that you get to see this asshole DeSanta die is always a good thing. Even if you don't pull the trigger yourself, you let the rebels get a piece of him because they get the 
they're the ones who really need the, the killing of DeSanta. The gates of El Presidio starts with John walking in on Reyes having intercourse with a random woman when John asks him about Luisa. Reyes tells him that he's basically just manipulating her with saying all these big words and then he kind of gets her to love him. Reyes also tells John that he found Escuela and they ride out for El Presidio where Javier is holed up. Reyes then sets John up on a wagon filled with TNT where he lights the fuse and hopes John jumps off before it explodes blowing up the gate. As Reyes and his men fight the Mexican army once it blows up, John finds Javier in the barracks. Javier tries some last minute theatrics to save his own skin, but John sees right through all the bullshit immediately. Then Javier throws a box at John and escapes through the window. If John catches Javier, he will tell John, Bill is holed up with Allende, leading to one final battle with the Mexican army. Javier keeps trying to save his life if you do capture him alive on the way back, and when he realizes he will die, he kind of gives up and begins to insult John. After John puts Javier away, the army attacks the base, and John uses the cannon to hold them back. Using the cannon is just extremely fun, as you could literally see bodies flying all over the place when you blow shit up. Just amazing. And then he brings Javier to the American border where he finally meets Mr. Ross and Mr. Fordham, the two FBI agents who hold his wife and son. This is a great mission where we're introduced to Javier, get to finish him off. It's, it's pretty clear that he's a slimy character. All these people love Javier in Red Dead Redemption 2, but Red Dead Redemption 1, he just sucks as a character. He's in this one mission and he clearly just seems like an asshole, even from like before when he was in the gang with John. And it's also just like, fun with the cannon where you just blow shit up and one that does a lot to move the plot forward as Javier is finally captured which makes it one of the best missions in the entire game and one of the best in Mexico. The next mission in a point in time really seals off the whole Mexico chapter when John goes into Escalera where he sees the Mexican army executing rebels. Reyes has finally been captured by the Mexican army and Luisa tries to save him but is quickly killed right in front of him. After this John shoots two of the men that hold Reyes and challenges the other one to a duel. After John wins a duel he frees Reyes and some prisoners who will fight for Reyes. John and Reyes then fight their way up to Allende's vi villa where John hops on the Gatling gun and absolutely obliterates Allende's men defending. After taking over the villa, Allende's men try to take it back, but John and Reyes' men quickly hold them off. They see Allende and Bill escaping in a wagon, and then Reyes and John quickly follow them on horseback. After stopping their stagecoach, John shoots Bill and Reyes shoots Allende, finishing off the revolution and John's time in Mexico. John tries to leave Reyes with some lasting words about power and remembering the people that got him there, but you could kind of tell that Reyes doesn't really care. It's a great mission. I love Luisa's death because it doesn't matter at all to Reyes and she risked her life for someone who never cared about her. Just a tragic ending to a great character and just the worst way to happen. And her dad also gets a really bad ending with his heart getting fed to dogs. It's just tragic. Uh, the gunfight throughout this mission also has some solid progression and of course it's fun because you get to use the Gatling gun and just obliterate some people. Here's my full ranking for all of the Mexico missions. The West Elizabeth chapter starts with Bear Another One's Burdens, where John returns to Blackwater to see Mr. Ross and Mr. Fordham, where they tell him that he needs to kill Dutch Vanderlyn after John insults him. Mr. Ross also shows John that he has all the power in their relationship, as he could always have John charged for his crimes. Mr. Ross then gives him a semi-automatic pistol, which is one of my favorite guns in the entire game, and this is why this is one of my favorite missions as well. He also sees Mr. Wes Dickens getting arrested, and Wes Dickens is let go on John's word of Wes Dickens helping with the Williamson killing. John, Ross, and Fordham drive over to the Serendipity, a boat where Dutch is so-called holed up in, in an automobile, all the while reminding of John the position he's in, insulting his intelligence every single chance they get. And John and Fordham investigate the serendipity when they realize no one's there except for their informant, Gnosis, who tells them it's a trap set up by Dutch. John and Fordham fight their way back to the car while John carries Gnosis on his back. On the way back to Blackwater, their car breaks down and Dutch has been ambushed them. John and Ross quickly hold them off as Fordham gets the car ready to go. They then take Gnosis to Professor McDougal, a Yale anthropologist. And this is just a great mission in general. And it's a great intro mission for the whole Blackwater saga. And I really love how we get introduced to both Gnosis and McDougal from the minds of Ross and Fordham, who clearly looked down upon anyone who is an agent 
FBI agent. And I think it's also we get like a bigger look into Ross and Fordham, who clearly just like look down upon John himself and they kind of just hold all their power and they like use him like a little puppet. And it's just really interesting to see how these people just hate everyone that isn't them. And the gunfights in this mission are also pretty solid, even though the introduction of the semi-automatic pistol makes it just a little bit easier. The next mission is Great Men Are Not Always Wise, where John returns to Mr. Ross and Mr. Fordham, who tells them Dutch is about to rob the Blackwater Bank. John, Ross, and Fordham take up sniper positions across from the bank, and they begin a shootout with Dutch's gang. After taking out a majority of his men, John and two FBI agents rush into the bank. After clearing out the bank of Dutch's men, he sees Dutch take a hostage of the bank tellers, and Dutch and John reminisce on their old times, as Dutch kind of shimmies his way to the door and kind of just insults John the whole time. Dutch then shoots the hostage on the way out, giving him some time to escape the bank. Then he rides out on a car, which he soon crashes because I'm assuming this guy does not know how to drive an automobile. And then John and the rest of the FBI are ambushed by Dutch's men in the forest where Dutch escaped off to. After they clear out Dutch's men, they realize Dutch escaped from them. And just overall, I feel like this mission is really solid. I love the fact that he finally meet Dutch. And he's exactly as John has described him, a charismatic man who takes his ideals to the next level and just really fall in from his earlier period of grace. The mission itself is also good with some nice progressing gunfights that take you through multiple settings. The next mission is at home with Dutch where John goes to Professor McDougal's who goes on an unhinged tangent before Gnosis tells them where Dutch is hiding in a way that they can scope out his base. They have to climb up a cliff to get to the scope out location so McDougal leaves them as this guy never goes out of the house and just kind of always sits inside that's what he does after the entire ride literally making racist remarks about Gnosis and Native Americans in general they then make their way through a mine shaft where Gnosis is attacked by a miner and they're forced out of the cave by exploding mine cart and forced to fight miners on the way out Gnosis is injured during this fight and tells John to go on alone on the way up the cliffs, John encounters a bear and a cougar, both of whom he quickly takes out, especially with a semi-automatic pistol. John then climbs to the top of the cliff where he neutralizes the scout and takes his binoculars. John then sees Dutch execute an army man, and then Dutch shoots John's binoculars, knocking him out. Gnosis then saves John and brings him back to Professor McDougal's, where he wakes up after Professor McDougal puts a little... A little drug under his nose to get him out but it's another solid mission but i feel like this parkour stretch when you go up the mountain it's just so boring to me because it's just like so clunky with rockstar's controls where you just kind of are just spamming x or like whatever button you use to get up and i just think that holds the mission back and there's just like not a lot of interesting stuff going on throughout the entire mission in for purely scientific purpose Purposes. John returns to McDougal's lab where he goes on another racist rant about the Native Americans where they and Gnosis then ride to a logging camp. On the way there, they're stopped by a bear who McDougal shoots at and John is forced to kill. They then try and offer a peace deal to the natives who point their guns at John, Gnosis, and McDougal's before shooting Gnosis in point blank range. After John fights off the rest of the natives, he and McDougal ride back to Blackwater, being ambushed by Dutch's men twice on the way back. This mission really shocked me with Gnosis's death but doesn't really do anything well besides that and the rest of the mission is just pretty boring and generic especially with the gunfights like Gnosis's death really just caught me off guard and it is a really shocking twist but nothing else in this mission is all that interesting or good compared to the rest of the missions in the game so it really is held back by that. The next mission is the prodigal son returns to Yale. John goes to McDougal's lab where he's packing up and getting to return to Yale before Dutch shoots through his window. Dutch confronts John where John tries to make peace and Dutch wants McDougal to let him show the world what Dutch and the natives think about anthropology. John and McDougal then escape onto the roof where McDougal is held hostage by a native before John puts a bullet through his head. John then fights off Dutch's men stationed on the rooftops and he and McDougal ride to Manzanita Post. On the way there, they're ambushed by Dutch's men multiple times before leaving the West for good. I like this mission, especially Dutch's inclusion, but the gunfights are only okay. I feel like it's just pretty brief and pretty like there's not much going on while you're actually in the mission and like the gameplay isn't all that fun. So it's an okay mission, but like I feel like Dutch really carries it. The next mission starts the end of the Blackwater series and it's and you will know the truth. John returns to Agent Ross and Fordham, who force him to help them with a raid on Dutch's hideout, with John manning a Gatling gun on top of an automobile. A whole regiment of soldiers is out there helping with the raid and back up the automobile. John quickly 
mows down the first group of natives after they set up a trap for the natives and they begin to chase down the rest of them with the car that John's on. And after following them, they're ambushed by natives on all sides. And it gets pretty hard as Fordham's bumpy driving makes the car block a lot of the Gatling gun shots, which really kind of pisses me off. Like the Gatling gun is so OP, but it's so hard to use it because Fordham is right in front of you and you have like the big like car seat there. Like that's where they're sitting. And it's just hard because Fordham's bumpy driving just blocks all the shots. So it's it kind of pisses me off. But then the car is blown off the road by dynamite and the mission ends. Being on the Gatling gun is really cool, especially when you're on automobile and you're actually like moving with the Gatling gun you can kind of like I wish you could move wherever you want with the Gatling gun of course you're not driving the car but still it's like cool to actually be moving and using the Gatling gun but the mission is just a setup mission for the next one it doesn't really do anything on its own besides having an interesting enough gun fight and a cool Agent Ross speech from him to John the Blackwater saga finally ends with and the truth will set you free which happens right after the last mission where Ross Fordham and John right out to Dutch's hideout after Ross threatens John with shooting him instead of actually taking out Dutch. When they finally do get there, they start a raid with the US Army, basically a massacre of Dutch's new gang. John and the army fight their way up to the village, taking out every single native in their way. John then gets on the Gatling gun and begins to absolutely obliterate every single person there. The army then blows up the gate to Dutch's personal area, leaving John to fight Dutch alone. Dutch demands a Gatling gun as John takes out Dutch's personal guard. Dutch then throws insults about John's family, saying that he married a whore and that Jack is a whore's son, the same as he was. John then forces Dutch off the Gatling gun by setting fire to the area around it and then follows him up to the caves in his fortress, forcing him out onto a cliff where there's nowhere else to go. John then points his gun at Dutch, where Dutch tries to reason with John for one last time. We, I got a plan, John. I got a plan this time. And then John says, you always got a plan. Just some classic words that really tie in with Red Dead Redemption 2 when he does have a plan all the time. Then John, Dutch's last words tell John about the cycle of the revenge that the FBI and the government will keep having, which is some great foreshadowing and how the time of outlaws has passed, foreshadowing the struggles that Jack Marston and the rest of like John might face in the future. And Dutch jumps off the cliff, ending his own life, which looks extremely funny in game, where he just bounces off the cliff. And it's like, I don't know, it's really funny. And then Ross insults John about not having the guts to shoot Dutch. Ross then shoots Dutch to make it seem better on his report because they want to actually make sure that, like, you know, John killed him. After making a joke about John's family, Ross then tells Dutch that his family is safe at home. And it's just an amazing mission. The gunfights are all great. They have some great progressions up through Cochine, D Dutch's hideout. And just Dutch's final monologue with John perfectly illustrates his character, how he's not built for this new world where outlaws aren't really there, and how John is also not built for the new world, and how there's not going to be a place for people like them in the future, which really works for the entire premise of this in this game where it's like the death of the wild west and this mission just does a great job of ending the whole outlaw saga and really is like the climax of the story here's my full ranking for all of the blackwater west elizabeth missions the outlaws return finally sees john's return to his ranch beecher's hope and his family's just overjoyed to see him in the morning jack and john set off to mcfarland's ranch because all their cattle have either died or been taken because uncle was drinking instead of taking care of the, the ranch on the way there john tries to explain his absence in the most abstract way trying to keep most of the details away from jack John and Jack then get the cattle from Bonnie and her father, and on the way home, run into some rustlers. John easily fights them off, but Jack is a little shaken from the experience. It's a pretty solid mission. The gameplay is pretty boring, just driving the herd back, but meeting Jack and Abigail is great, and you can finally see the reason that John committed all those atrocities throughout the game. The next mission is by Sweat and Toil, where John wakes up Uncle and they throw some insults at each other before taking the herd out to pasture. Uncle is quickly thrown off his horse as there's an explosion by the train, resulting in the herd stampeding. Outlaws rob, try to rob the train, and John has a choice to either take them out or stay with the herd. 
I always take them out. It just feels like a good thing for John to do. And uncle should be the one, you know, making things up to John instead of the other way around. And then they then drive the herd out to pasture again. And the mission ends. This is an okay mission. And while I really like the twist during the middle, there's not really much else going for it. It's a short mission. And all you do is like drive the herd out to pasture. So there's not really much going on. The next mission is a continual feast where John and Uncle go to round up some Mustangs and I love the anger and tension between the two of them where John is just always insulting Uncle. He's like, of course we need some money. Like, what are you doing just staring at these Mustangs all day? Let's go out and get them ready to go and sell them. And John breaks three horses, which is pretty fun. Like, of course I do like the horse breaking mechanic, but that's the entirety of the mission. There's literally nothing else going on. You just go out a little bit, break some horses, and then the mission ends. It's a cool mission, but it doesn't really build any character development for anyone besides the clear animosity between uncle and john especially at a time of contention for the ranch when they don't have much money but that's pretty similar to the last mission and i feel like they could have maybe both been put into one big mission but either way it's 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 okay mission it's nothing special the next mission is pestilence where abigail's just cooking food and john confronts her on what she's cooking john then does some nice foreshadowing about jack's eventual downfall into becoming a gangster like his father St. Jack would never do that. Then crows break into the silo and Abigail asks John to shoot him down. They eventually go away after John shoots a ton of them and that's the entirety of the mission. That's the whole mission. Like it literally is one minute long maybe, just a little bit of talking and then you shoot down a bunch of crows. It's so boring and I don't even understand why it's in here as its own mission because it's just, you go out there and you fucking spam the button and you just shoot a bunch of crows you're, you're not even moving at all you're just standing there and shooting a bunch of crows in dead eye and it's just like it could have been added to the beginning or the end of a mission to give it a little bit more character but it's just so boring on its own the next mission is old friends new problems which where abigail confronts john after he receives a letter from bonnie i love abigail's sarcastic attitude dur during the beginning of the mission and then bonnie asks for corn from john abigail accompanies him there because she's clearly a little jealous of bonnie on the way there john tells abigail about how he met bonnie and they both exchange pleasantries about their absences from each other then john then drops the corn off at bonnie's and while there they all kind of banter around each other and bonnie clearly wishes she had a man like john as they have like this three second thing where she's like kicks the ground as another dude goes by it's really funny and then on the way back abigail has some great foreshadowing saying the government will never leave them alone after john has already done what they asked he's always they're always gonna be coming back and this mission isn't interesting really at all gameplay wise you're literally just driving the cart there and back but i have some great dialogue from all the characters i just love all the interactions that go on during this one especially the banter between like abigail and john and bonnie there and just like how bonnie is like all smitten with john even if like he she knows he has a wife the next mission is john marston and son where john sees jack reading and invites him to go out hunting rufus jack's dog leads the way out in the hunt sniffing out prey and after john shoots a couple of elk and jack skins one of them they go to manzini to post to sell the meat jack seems to really like the new experience foreshadowing ha what happens in the next couple of missions after selling the meat john and jack head home where jack exclaims that he loved the experience it's a solid mission and there's some great bonding between jack and john in the next mission, Wolves, Dogs, and Sons, John watches Jack shooting a rifle and tries to give him some tips before Jack gives him some attitude about always running off when he tries to become a father. John asks Jack to accompany him with scaring off the wolves who have been after their herd. Rufus finds a scent of the wolves and John quickly eliminates them. Then Jack asks John if he can go hunting alone and also says he could kill a bear, perfectly foreshadowing the next mission. There's also some other dialogue about how they could be a outlaw duo together and they can be Robin Banks, but always coming home to Abigail. It's just so funny because one good mission and Jack always wants to do these things that his father does. And there's just some great foreshadowing in that dialogue that really represents Jack as a character in the next few missions and after the game ends. So it's just amazing. And I feel like this mission is pretty solid with some great bonding between Jack and John and just some great foreshadowing. But the gameplay is just pretty much the same as the last mission. The next mission is Spare the Love, Spoil the Child, where Uncle approaches John, telling him that Jack went out to hunt down a grizzly bear that's been spotted. John quickly rides out to find him, as he knows that Jack can't really hunt a grizzly by himself. John follows Rufus up to the top of a mountain, 
where he finds a grizzly bear and Jack who is cowering behind a rock after being attacked. After John dispatches of the bear, he and Jack head home. When John says when Jack is ready to hunt bears, he'll take him. But that clearly will never happen because of this next mission. This mission is really solid and I like the dynamic of Jack trying to prove himself to John but it doesn't do enough in that apartment to be really a great mission as it is pretty short. The last mission of Red Dead Redemption is The Last Enemy Shall Be Destroyed where John talks to Jack about their farm and just kind of shooting stuff before uncle comes out and warns them that people are attacking their farm. He tells Jack to go inside and lock everything up and to protect his mother. You know, of course, Abigail's the most important person in the family. John and Uncle begin to defend the farm from the army. After taking out the first wave of army soldiers, John heads inside and Jack comes out to defend the farm. Then Uncle is soon hit by a bullet and kind of just knocked out of the fighting. After fending off another round of army soldiers, they say goodbye to Uncle as he dies on the porch right in front of them. And he just can't get up. He's just like an old guy. He, that's a perfect place for him to die. John and Abigail and Jack eventually do head for the barn as they try to formulate an escape plan. Jack and Abigail head for the barn as John covers their back. John holds off a final wave of them, meets them in the barn, and asks for jo Jack and Abigail to leave him. John accepts that the men are only after him. After seeing 30 men outside surrounding the barn, accepts his fate and sacrifices himself to the party. While John takes out multiple soldiers, the group outside quickly fills him with lead, including Agent Ross, who then lights up a cigar, smoking that John Marston pack. After John's death, the perspective switches to Jack, who rides back to the barn with Abigail. They see John's bloodied body on the ground, and Abigail breaks down crying. The mission ends with Jack and Abigail burying John and Uncle on the cliff overlooking Beecher's Hope. It then switches to three years later as Jack, where Abigail's grave is also seen, having died three years after John. This mission is just amazing and a great twist if you don't already know John's fate. It's also amazing to see John's sacrifice for his family and heartbreaking at the same time because all the time and hard work he did to get to see his family turned out to only be for a short, short time. Overall, this is one of the greatest game endings of all time. It's just a masterclass in storytelling. Rockstar did amazing on this one, and they just made John such an amazing character, and it's actually sad when you see him die in front of you. So I think this is just one of the greatest endings of all time of any game, and just the perfect way to end Red Dead Redemption. Here's my full ranking for all of the Beecher's Hope missions. And here is my complete ranking for all of the Red Dead Redemption missions. If you guys did make it this far, thank you for watching this whole video. It took a long time to make. And if you guys do want to see more content like this, please subscribe. And there will be some videos popping up, some tier lists or some similar videos to this. So if you do want to see, check out some of my other videos, check them out.